Happy to be joined by the head coach of MMA Factory, of course, who trains the likes of Cyril Gaon and Nasser Dinimovov. It is Fernand Lopez joining me here on the program. Fernand, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Man? I'm uh, doing very well, Fernand. It's great to talk to you. Uh, we haven't heard much from you since the fight with Cyril Gaon. Uh, how are you doing, first off? Because I know there's been a lot of opinions about that fight with John Jones. I'm fine. I'm doing great. I mean, when you have the, the more important thing around you, family, friend, and that's the more important thing. So I, I'm fine. I'm doing great. Okay, that's good. Um, I'm sure you've had a lot of time to go back and look at the fight with John Jones. What went wrong in that fight with Cyril Gaon? Uh, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of hard to really get the point, the pin where we, we, we were wrong. Uh, I tend to say that, first of all, we need to be able to accept that someone just, that they were strong and, and, and and better than you, and then you just you just let that go. Cause if you like, we didn't have a fight. We didn't have a fight starting, so it's hard to me to tell exactly at which point uh, that was a mess. Um, obviously, we had that uh, 90 second where uh, uh, Cyril was the bad spot and tried to defend that. You no, know, actually. Uh, yeah, we didn't have even time to to defend or whatsoever. I, I don't know. I, I still don't figure out. We, are, we have been talking, trying to debrief mm. about everything. Talking like, okay, what happened? Is is there anything emotional that happened between your work in the cage? And is it something? No, we didn't have time to. Uh, there, there's only frustration, frustration that we train a lot and it did evolve a lot and it did try to evolve and uh, we didn't show that evolution and uh, anyone that's not in, in wasn't inside the camp uh, would just try to pick a shot and uh, but the reality is that uh, we uh, we thought that uh, John Jones was stronger that day was well, direction was good that day uh, that uh, right hand coming from Cyril is not something that is doing often. Like most of the time, it tend to 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 measure to do not throw that right hand because just throw without any fat will expose your hips. And uh, so what we did, like after try to figure out conditioning if there's something wrong, uh, strategy if there's something wrong, um, we. When we end up just saying that, you know what, let's just back on board. Let's just try to, to walk again, to train again, and to try to be better fighter in all the area. That's it. I mean, like, try to, sometimes we, we people try, tend to try to find who is, who is the fault, who, went, who did the bad thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just have to admit that when you go for uh, even the Olympic Games, you will have only one person with gold. And then you will have silver and bronze. And that day, John Johnson had the gold. And uh, that was very disappointing for all of us, uh, including Cyril, who, uh, who were very affected. I mean, as soon as the fight was end, it was like, geez, I fucked up. What just happened? Yeah, and um, but I'm like, no, you, I mean, it's it's happening. No matter yeah. people, they will try to criticize you about uh, uh, what was wrong with your wrestling. But actually, uh, you know what, Curtis Blade is a good wrestler, but uh, the wrestling do not help every time. You know, uh, or um, you can train how. You, you can train very good on wrestling, but you will always be uh, on the couple guy in, in UFC in wrestling department. You need to complete that game with, uh, with your accuracy uh, on the punch, with the, the, the choice that you make on the punch. We need to do that together and we need to train on that. So that's what we try to do right now. We're just back on board, try to figure out 
uh, and train all the area, wrestling, grappling, all the department of it, and even striking, working very sharp so we can improve uh, the accuracy and the power of the striking department. That's it. Yeah. No, it, it's tough to gauge because the fight was so quick, right? So it's tough to sort of, you know, determine what happened here and there. Um, two things you mentioned there. One thing I should bring up. People talked about the hand injury with Cyril gone. Was that a factor in the fight? Uh, I was trying to just understand. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, uh, I, I can blend them because they're seeing a scarf, which right. is not when you see any scarf, you're wondering, is that hand is totally healed? Uh, but uh, when you know Cyril, Cyril will not check, take a chance to go there with a, a broken hand. No, that, 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 that wasn't. I mean, like, we had a camp where we, we spent four weeks. Uh, we, we had six-week camp, and before the camp, we, when we had the announcement of the fight of Cyril again with John Jones, we had already a three-week camp. Uh, and we were sparing, boxing with, with good boxer, with like fresh national team boxer, heavyweights, and we was punching hard. He was punching, and uh, and we didn't feel any pain on that. So I don't want to blame the hand or whatsoever. No, it's it's just like I said again, we will try to check all the box and try to understand what happened. But the reality is that sometimes you just shows up. And sometimes you just mess up, and uh, I'm willing to take all the, the, the blame and say that I'm, I'm I fucked up. I'm the one. I'm the coach. I'm the head coach. I'm the one who fucked up. That's it. And, and just one other thing as well uh, that I you know I don't know if you clarified before the fight, but there was that interview that Cyril did in French where it basically came out that he says he doesn't train unless he has a fight coming up. Uh, I, I I give an answer about that, saying that. Uh, something true. Mm -hmm. Cyril wasn't training out of the camp. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that Cyril was so busy. If you take out the year of COVID, mm -hmm. Cyril is one of the most busy guy in the UFC. Mm -hmm. So that means that he's always training. Mm -hmm. Almost. Like, whenever he come back to the training, to the camp, to the fight, it will take like 10 days, two weeks, but then they announce a new fight. And then we are back to train. And then it's off. But when it's off, it's totally off. That's what he, he, he used to do. And um, bef we had that series, series come up with this statement because we had that in a meeting, in our criticism meeting to improve one of the things that was coming up about me, about the conditioning training is like, we should keep training in order to develop even when the training is off. Mm. And we decide that that's what we will do. And that's why we start to train even before the John Jones fight. Remember, we were in Vegas for Nasuddin fight. That's right. But Sirian was there and we brought up his main sparring partner, uh, uh, um, how to call this guy, um, uh, Meptouche. We brought him from uh, Reda Meptouche. We brought him just to be a sparring partner of Cyril during the, 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 the fight week. That show you how we were concerned about Cyril training out of the camp. And then we had the confirmation of the matchmaking UFC saying that John Jones uh, will be the next fight. And then we, we keep doing what we was doing. So what I'm saying is that I don't want to take that uh, as a, uh, an excuse saying that because he didn't train enough, mm -hmm. that's why we missed the fight. Cyril has been training that same style of training all his career and he has been beating people around. I mean, he took out the the the, the dos santos jerzino uh and, and how to say uh volkov all these yeah. names where yeah. when he was training the same thing what do you i mean if that was that bad mm -hmm. you would have not succeeded with this guy i mean the name that i just mentioned is not a joke 
uh, uh, like Finnish uh, Ted Tuvasa is not a joke. I mean, this guy, uh, number third, number two, number, it's not a joke. That they have a very big challenge. Is, is he have been doing this with the same mode of training, which is train hard, very consciously, but whenever he come back, he needs vacation. He need time to come back. And uh, because he was so busy that there's some, uh, there's some um, factor of training, like the strength. Yeah. You need time to make strength. Like you need, you need three months at least, uh, two months and a half to develop your strength. We yeah. couldn't because he was so busy that the problem that we can give him was just um, uh, uh, explosivity, was just the speed, was just the, we couldn't like take the time to develop the strength because strength will bring you weakness at some point before going to the next level, which is improve on your level. We couldn't right. do that. And we decided that we will now, just before the fight with John, we will now start to train even before. This, that was the statement that he had. But again, if you take back the guy had what? Um, 14 fight and then he, oh, no, a 13 fight and then he won 11 fight, MMA fight with the same mode of training. I yeah. mean, no, no, it's it's not a, it was not ideal uh, a situation going into that. Um, how's Cyril doing right now? I, I I know he's back training, but uh, how are his spirits? How is he feeling these days? He's fine. Uh, that was the first time that he's been facing crit critics, very hard critics. Mm. And so that was the the new experience for him. <laughs> like yeah. he didn't know he didn't know how how the uh, the digital market, the the, the millennial world, the, the social media was tough and hard. Whenever you you you're down, and um, so he, he learned that the hard way. Uh, but eventually, he, he's fine now. Like if he, the, the, he's lucky because he's surrounded with very good people, good. Uh, very good. Uh, his family, they are very family. They are very. Um, tied together, they are very solid. They bring in a lot of love, you know. He, his wife, his daughter, uh, his father, everyone is they are very tied, and I, I, I guess that help for him. So, uh, and, and and what is good with him is that he know he have a lot of hold on his game. He know he have to improve, but what I was care is that. Because of the critics, he might just forget who he is actually. Because you don't become uh, interim champ just randomly. You don't become number one just randomly. Uh, Cyril C ranked number one uh, after the champ. Uh, John Jones is not random. It's something that means that you have something. And sometimes, if the critic, if the critic are very hard on you, and you are new in that game, you might just be like, "Oh, I suck. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how 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 bad I am." But he's he's very aware of the the, the gap that he have to the hole that he have on his game. But at the same time, he's aware of that is special, that is good, and that he just have to 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 to, to improve and fix a couple things to be on his prime. So yeah, uh, it's fine. Okay, good. Yeah, I was going to say that's that's part of the fight game. When you lose, people want to tell you everything you did wrong. When you win, they're your best friend, right? So it's it's hard to deal with that, I know. I'm sure for all fighters, right? So how, how have you dealt with that? Because I'm sure you've got some negative feedback as well. Oh my God. Uh, I, 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 I'm... On that game, I'm very now. I'm very on that game. Like, and, and now I know how to handle that. Before that was the first time that happened to me. That was with uh, in, in, in 2018 with with Francis. Oh right, yeah. And uh, and, uh, and um, I was so shocked. I was I, 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 I was like, wow. 
why me? Why why everyone is on me? But but that's the game. If you choose to be on on, on blight, when, when it's bad, you're gonna you you gonna get the, the reverse, the other side of the the, 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 the coin, you know. And uh, uh, no, and now I know how to deal with that because uh, I, I I try to remember the, the the reality. I try to be honest with myself. I try to be focused on what we didn't do and what we can do better. And I try to focus on what is the reality. The reality is that if someone uh, look at you and decide to look at you only the empty glass, you will see the empty glass, the half empty glass of water. Mm -hmm. And if someone is trying to look at you good, you will see the half full glass of water. And what I'm what I'm saying here is that people that coming very hard on me will say, "Oh, this guy sucks. He he had chance to have the belt three times in the heavyweight division, and he missed that fight. He missed the fight with CP against Francis Ngannou, and then he missed the fight from Sir uh, Gane with Francis Ngannou, and then he missed the yeah. fight with right. and John Jones. That's yeah. that's what you you." You will focus on it if you want to be bad guy and you want to criticize. This is give you a lot of things. But if you want to be a good guy, you will think like, yeah, damn, that's not random. How this guy managed to bring to be at this spot as a coach to finally end up in the title level? How, how do we manage to do that? How do you do to take someone from zero? Like when Sirgan arrived in my gym, he didn't know even what was the MMA, and then now end up to the title. How do you do when you get a guy like Francis, didn't know even, barely know how to throw punches, and then end up in the title? Maybe there's something there. Maybe it's not that casual. Maybe it's not that random. And you need to not be cocky and think that you are the best, you need to keep in mind that I'm not that bad. Mm -hmm. I can. I, I need to try to be better. I need to try till I die. I need to keep trying. I need to keep going. And, and you need to take the loss as a um, winning process. Yeah. When you, when you keep that in your mind and you understand that this game is everyone is looking is way to make money and to business like you need to have the 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 clickbait the 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 the, the, the title that would bring you the like and the click and the inform and everything that will bring you that people will know who is james lynch yeah. you need to do that you need to do your job very well right i cannot blame you if tomorrow i had a very good title that will sell. That's your game, yeah. and you need to shock the world. And if 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 shocking the world means saying very bad thing on me, so you can have the most people liking and commenting your content, then that's the game. When you are aware of that, you feel better. You you understand everyone is bad. Everyone try to just you know the the the, the on Monday. Uh, Trevor Whitman is the best coach in the world. On Wednesday, when you have uh, uh, Rose Namajuna lose the fight or have uh, uh, Usman Kamaru lose the fight, he's the worst coach in the world. This, this is the game. I yeah. mean, that's the game. I'm not to compare myself with Trevor Whitman, who I respect so much. He's one of the best in the world, if not the best. Uh, I, I just want to give you how the things work. And when you accept that and you play the game and you you get involved in it. You, you need to accept that and live with that. That's it. Yeah. No, well said. And by the way, just so people know, I just do the video interviews. Uh, you know, the sites are the ones that write about this. So uh, we're keeping it all unedited here, Fernand, uh, to make sure people understand. Um, so as far as Cyril, uh, his next fight, when do you see him fighting again? Do you have a timeline as a team when you'd like to see him fight? September. Okay. Great. And, and any opponents in mind? Um, you know, we just had Curtis Blades come off a loss. Uh, we have, uh, there's, there's a few other heavyweights that Cyril has not fought yet. Do you have an opponent in mind uh, for him in his return fight? 
Sergei Pavlovich will be a good opponent. Okay, Sergei Pavlovich. Okay, that, that's great. Um, and and what, what do you make of the fact that um, John Jones and Stipe Miocic has not been booked yet? Um, do you think that fight will happen? Uh, I hope that will happen because uh, I've been told that uh, Jones is not going to last that much in the game. I think that he wants to retire after the next fight. So that would be a shame to not see him with, uh, with Stipe. Obviously, that, that, the, 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 the biggest regret that I can have is, is, is him not firing Cyril anymore. I mean, like, we are not legit to ask any fight against John Jones at this point. Regard, I mean, if, regarding what happened in the last fight with him. But you can tell him inside you, you can you know what would have happened if the city guy that you know had sh have showed there and, and, and show up and, 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 and be there in the cage with him. And that's one of my big regret that uh, this kind of opportunity just arrived once. And uh, and um, and uh, but uh, yeah, I, I would like to see John Jones fighting CP. Uh, uh, that's a sh that, that's a shame that they, they, they can they, they will not fight. No, no, yeah. If it does happen, do you think John will win that fight? Yes, no doubt. I, I agree with that. Um, I know you don't work with him anymore, but Francis Ngannou leaving the UFC has now become a free agent. He's trying to do boxing. He's trying to maybe sign with another promotion. Uh, what do you make of his decision to leave the UFC? Um, well, but that's uh, the most important thing is him being um, um, being fine with the decision. I mean, I don't have to, I don't have to make, give my word on, on this choice. What I, what I would like just to be is like, I just want him to be in peace with himself. I just want him to be happy with him. If he's happy, then everything's okay. I mean, no matter what you propose to anyone, if he's happy with a decision, leave him with that decision. I mean, like, uh, I, I respect this decision and uh, I guess that if I, He's saying that that's good for him. We need to believe him and we need to uh, respect that. Okay. Very well said. What's the latest with uh, the heavyweight Slim, who uh, we know has been, he was trying to get signed to the UFC, and then now we're hearing Bellator's trying to sign him. He's still under contract with Aries, correct? What, what's the latest on that situation? Uh, nothing special. I mean, he's still on the contract with us, and uh, that's it, period. So uh, we are, I'm not aware of him signing officially with the Bellator as soon as, I mean, like, we, 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 are, we have a, a, a case, a court case pending on that matter. So uh, I don't see how that will happen. But if he signed with the, with, with the Bellator, uh, I would be surprised. Um, I'm, I don't think that will happen. And is Slim still represented by your management group or is he, because what, what happened with that? Because there was some talk of if he was available to sign with other management. Uh, it's, I mean, he still is, is on the contract with us, but again, um, I, I, he decided to just uh, stop the contract and stop everything uh, while he was on the contract, I guess. Uh, he got, a, he got a good advice by his new management saying to him that uh, he, should, uh, he should not be scared of any, any jurisdiction or any law. He's on top of the law. He can, he can do everything. So I guess that's what happened. I okay. guess the, the, the new management probably told him, listen, don't worry. I mean, it's not probably. I know. I know by fact that the management uh, told him, don't worry, we got this. No matter if you are on the contract, we can undo the contract. We can bring you where we want. You just have to leave them and then give me the okay and then I, I will deal with that. And, uh, and we know, the, 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 we know the, the story after that. And, and do you expect him to fight for Aries soon? Um, like, like is there any, has there been any talks about him fighting for the promotion? Well, we are doing our job, which is propose him some fight, and then uh, and then we, we had the proposition for a fight for him, and he said no. 
Uh, so we, we, well, yeah, the, pro the process is going on. And just, just last thing on the situation, Ali Abdelaziz has basically slandered you on social media. There's all these reports about criminal stuff. And the latest tweet I don't know he had said that you were banned to coach MMA in certain countries. How do you deal with that when someone is, you know, saying things that without any proof? Does that bother you? We talked about, you know, the response on social media, but hearing it from a manager like that is very powerful. How do you deal with that? Uh, what is powerful is what is... What is powerful will be to take your responsibility. What is powerful is that if someone is a criminal and you know that you have the evidence that he's a criminal, just turn him to the police. That's very dangerous. That's very bad for him to slam me and say things on me. Uh, but he's the one try to explain to people that he's not a terrorist when people are saying that he is a terrorist. I'm not saying that. People are saying. And uh, so I, I don't know what he's doing with that. But in my point of view, coming from this kind of mind, it's just ridiculous. I mean, like, uh, uh, definitely, uh, I, don't, I don't give a fuck about what he's saying. I mean, definitely give. He literally said that to me. He literally treat me, saying to me, if you don't do what I'm saying to you, if you don't release him, I will come with you with everything I got. I will just kill your name around. And I have contact uh, on the media. I, 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 I have the tape of him saying to me, are on the media in the US. I will kill you with the media. So, and that's what I'm saying. It's try to do that. But again, do you remember that? That's like six months from now, when this thing happened with, uh, with, uh, with Slim, you had one picture of me going around who was saying that they had sort of picture of me, that that was a normal picture that that they took from my UFC license and they, they, they kind of photoshopped the picture with me sweating like I was arrested and saying that uh, this is uh, um, this is Fernando Lopez, he's a criminal in Europe, so uh, uh, you will have uh, you will have more information on Monday. That Monday, that was on September uh, 2nd, Mm -hmm. That 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 and 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 that the month the next Monday who was coming, everyone was expecting having the disclose of a, a, a big a big information about me. But that was bullshit. That was his way to treat me. He said to me, "Listen, I will in couple hour I will I will bring something up, and if you release him, if you send me the letter of release." Then everything will be off on the line. But if you will learn, if you don't do that, you will just keep uh, seeing things on you. I will bring so many information of you, and, and you will not be able to defend yourself. So I know already. I know already that will, that will happen, and that will keep happening. That's that's his way to deal. You think that? You think that? Well, I care. here's the other thing. That outlet that tweeted that out called Belt News. They had a similar tweet about another former client of his. Uh, trying to say the same thing that they had a criminal record and all that stuff. So it's not a very reliable source that tweeted all that information out. Um, so yeah, I, I think um, I think people kind of see the angle there from him. Um, and, and just just my last thing on this, other than Cole Shelton, did any other media reach out to you about that whole situation with Slim? Were, were any American journalists, did they ever reach out to you? A lot, but, but it's crazy. He re this guy really on the media is good. Yeah. Because, because very good names on media, I will not, I will not uh, tarnish their name right, right now. But they, they reach they, out to you privately, is what you're saying. They reach out to me. They try to to uh, to treat me, and and, uh, and 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 I talk with them, and some some of them admit that they they, they were very good, very close to 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 Ali and. Uh, and um, uh, the, 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 the want to to help him because he, he was you know just harassing them asking them asking them things on me 
and 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 and, and he was asking them to to write things on me and to try to you know to touch my my name and try to you know I and and I know that it's, it's okay for me. I will not even answer to that. I, will, I won't even answer to that. I won't even give him the credit to to try to answer for what he's saying. But the more important is that if, if you in this future to say something on someone, at least bring some evidence. If you don't have any evidence and you keep promising people that the next day everything will be a uh, uh, the, 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 the guy will reveal some big story on the guy and you don't have anything, uh, it's, it's a shame. So yeah, I, I had a lot of media. Some were, some just had an interview with me, and then they told me, "Listen, I can, I can, I can bring that. I, I can do, I can publish this interview." I'm like, "Why not?" I'm like, "Well, uh, they're worried about access." This is not the intention. Yeah, they said that this is not the intention that we had. We had Ali saying to us, "We had, we have Ali, we had Ali saying to us this and this and this." He said to us that. There were no contract with, with with him. He said to us that this and this, and then you bring you brought all the proof. You send me the contract with Ali with Islam. You send me the contract with and and uh, and uh, all this evidence and doing that, I cannot publish this because the angle that he wanted me to bring this story is not good. And I, I admit to you that he's a friend of mine, and I don't want to get in, in, involved on that. So. Yeah, that's, that's what happened, yeah. Okay, wow, that, that's crazy. Okay, before we go, uh, I do have to mention Nasruddin Imovov is going to be fighting June 10th. How is he looking ahead of his fight with Chris Curtis? Well, Nasruddin is, is, is training very hard. He's trying to, you know, to uh, the same thing, try to improve, try to, to, to you know, to, to fix some 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 hole on his game. And, um, and um, yeah, we'll see how it happened there, but... Uh, He's, he's doing good. He's, uh, everything is on point. He's working very hard every day. Uh, hard. To, to, he has the intention to have a very good fight there, to, to, to really uh, uh, show that um, he got beat up by, um, by um, how do you call this guy? Sean, um, Sean, Sean Strickland. By Strickland, and uh, it's not because he... He was that weak is because the uh, Strickland is something complete to deal with. It's not easy. Well, I think people were a bit unfair on that because I think Sean Strickland was a much tougher opponent than Calvin Gaslam, and he had to fight him on a couple days' notice. Like I think, yeah, I think people forget that Sean's a very good fighter. Uh, he's a very good fighter. I don't even want to to take any uh, uh, any shot of. I mean, Calvin Gaslam shows that he was he was still a very very challenge for a guy like Nasuddin Mavov when he was like I love what I saw on, on Kevin Gasson that was a great fight yeah uh, but again when you prepare your camp with a southpaw and then you end up fighting a, 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 a regular sense of guy and with a, with a, an orthodox style of fighting it's not easy. We, we, we didn't find a way to, I mean, we started to find a way to beat him by the third round, but that was too late. And um, and uh, so people, did, did, I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. Number 12, fighting a number seven. You should not be surprised that the number 12 losing the fight, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, well, and he had he didn't have to cut to middleweight either. That was the other thing. Sean didn't have to cut as much weight to get down there. There we go. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, no excuse. We did lose that fight. We did we did lose that fight, and uh, we intend to come back and just train and come back. I mean, what you need to remember every time is that it's only the work that will help you and make pay you something. Uh, other thing that we say is just bullshit. Like when you when you are in the deep water, like uh, like uh, Israel Adesanya won recently with the laws, and that everyone would criticize him. The only thing that will shut up everyone is just victory, victory, victory. Yeah. So if you want to do anything, shut the fuck up, go back to the <laughs> gym and train. That's it. I mean, I can be here with you and open my mouth and say a lot of shit, but that's not helping for the fight. What will help for the fight in keep training and make Nasuddin win his next fight and then his next fight and, and, and again and again. That's it. The only thing 
that matter is the victory and training and winning the fight. The only the, the other thing I'm pushing. That's it. My last question. Are you excited to go back to Canada? You've had a lot of success in Canada with uh, Cyril, with, with TKO. I know Montreal is not Vancouver, but you must be excited to go back to Canada. I'm really so excited. I love Canada all the way. Like, all my experience in Canada was so great. Like, the TKO, uh, all the guys there in the TKO was so nice with us. Um, the, the, the performance that we had there in TKO was amazing. Like the, we had Taylor Abuse having been uh, uh, managed with, uh, how to call this guy, managed who is now the, the, in the in the in the Bentonwood division in US. Oh, Nate, Nate Manus, yeah, yeah. Nate, 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 uh, yes. Mark Andre Barrio. There's a lot of fighters that came out of TKO. Malcolm Gordon. Yes. There, there's there's plenty yes. that, that made their way to the UFC. Uh, just just quickly, is this your first time going to Vancouver? Have you been before? That's the first time. Oh, you're going to love it. There's a lot of... I'm, I'm from here, so I'm a little biased, but we have really nice mountains. You'll like the scenery here for sure. So, Thank you. That's very good. I, I'm looking to go there, and uh, I hope you're going to give me some I will. Tips. I will be there. Yeah, it'll be great. So it's only a 30-minute drive for me. Great. That'll be thank great. You. Fantastic. Fernand, thank you so much for doing this. I know we went way over time, but I'm really glad we got to cover everything. If there's anything you'd like to mention before we leave, I will give you the last word. Nothing special. Nothing special. Thank you for, for your job, what you're doing. And then uh, uh, they say nothing special. Thank you.